how to upgrade your stock helium antenna for free and earn more HNT. Keep it simple, keep it real, keep it educational today, I guess. Um, now, so <laughs> what I've done in the previous video, I just demonstrated the opportunity and the power of uh, a Yagi antenna conversion of an existing monopole or dot pole. Now, uh, there we go. Now you can see it properly. This, this is a HNT, uh, MP antenna, so HNT antenna um, from, from MP antennas in the US. But it's basically the fact that it's a dot pole and it resonates at 950 megahertz is what I wanted to illustrate here. The same logic applies to any stock antenna that you would get with any miner. There's a possibility to upgrade that device to a highly directional Yagi antenna, as the demonstration I've done in my previous video to, to kind of just explain the principle. Um, so the first thing is, if you look online, there are actually examples, has been there for quite a long time, of a, a windsurfer. Now, windsurfer is just a kind of an idea, a template that you can download from the internet. It becomes a bit of a parabolic dish, and that parabolic dish you can then slide over an antenna and, and turn it into a directional antenna. Now that's all great and obviously it's been used a lot and people say yeah this is all good I'm really happy with that and and I agree I tested it many moons ago and it, it definitely works. The thing for me is I mean I keep saying I'm an antenna engineer and today is the first time and the previous video is the first time I'm actually on camera starting to to to, to tell you what, what what can be done rather than just say your theories and, and concepts and so forth. So the first thing is for me the problem with the other one is not nothing, no criticism because I mean it is the start and this is that's the thing that triggered me to go somewhere. But do I know the antenna design or the antenna detail? Am I sure it is at the correct locations? Probably is, most likely is, but I don't know the exact characteristics of that antenna. I personally would like to know what I have and then move forward with that antenna um, going doing something specifically for me. Um, I can't control the outcome basically. How do I fix the antenna to a dot pole? Now what they use and that's that that idea is basically um, they have a, a slide and they slide it over, which is good, but it's there's there's no actual mechanics, there's no proper way to mount it. In my previous video, you see when I did outside tests, it also failed horribly. But it is a, a journey, and the journey is what I want to basically document as I go through this. Um, and that's that's one question: how do you fix something external to your antenna? Um, then of course it's mechanically scalable and reliable. Now reliable, I proved the point in my previous video, that's why I keep it in and I want to show the wind just blows it over. So no, these kind of um, experimental upgrades to your antenna is really that. It's an experiment to tell you, should you or should you not do something about your antenna. Is there an opportunity or is, are you going to waste your money if you buy a high gain antenna if something doesn't work? Um, and then also mechanically scalable, what I was thinking when I put that question on, on the slide is actually, I mean this, this works on a dipole, that the, the idea that it works on a dipole is a specific size, but once you have a bigger antenna, like in our case with helium, we have 950 megahertz, so it's already bigger than the template that you get. Um, also that's, that's the kind of thing where what can you do? and there's no one size fits all. We just need to think a bit more about things to do. Printer tolerance, that was a big issue for me. Now I have this design as well, I print. Um, now when I print on printer X, Y or Z, listen to my Z, not Z, um, I get different results. And I say that Z versus Z because also if you print on A4 versus later, there's also a problem. Um, and then now this latest template that I'm going to show you, I have to print on A3. So I realized I have to call out A3 on the actual template that I make so that you print it on the right um, document, otherwise it's gonna be scaled completely wrong anyway. So there is a problem with having these um, printed templates if you don't take care of it and there's a solution to that. Um, and then of course in my personal space, this is actually a, a tutorial that I designed for the guest lectures that I do at Adelaide University. So the idea is I get students to play with this and to learn and then to test this and to see can we do this differently. But that's why I, I, that's why I use CST student edition for the specific tutorial and that's why I had to do all this for, um, for this to say well there, there's a way to actually test your antennas, really get awesome differences, not just a little bit like uh, tweak it one or two dB, there's a massive jump available here, so up to seven dB maximum um, improvement, which is phenomenal, um, by using antenna design principles and skills. As I mentioned in the previous one, what I do want to call out here specifically is Blackheart Technology does antenna design work. 
that's one of our antennas in there. That's going to be one that, that I will talk subsequently. Um, and we do antenna consulting for other companies. So this is what we do to educate customers that the importance of antennas cannot be underestimated. It has to be well understood. Now I'm moving into that space. So you know what? Let's design something for everybody. Um, and then, is this multi-purpose or multi-band electrically scalable? That had designed, the designer had previously windsurfer, probably is, because the para parabola is frequency agnostic, so it will work. This designer I have here is frequency selective, so it's for one frequency, but you can do different things with it. So there is, again, not one size fits all. You do a Yagi, you can get good results, you could get different uh, aspects as um, putting nulls in certain places that you want, or you can make high gain, and with a parabola there's other things you could do. Um, now, of course, the, the whole idea is this is for helium, but that's, that's this video. The next video, I'm going to talk less about this stuff because then I've already said all these background theories. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing this to the table on the helium IoT conversation. Next time, I will just do a demonstration for 2.4 version of this 9 dBi antenna. And then the following video on this topic, again, I'm going to jump between different things because antennas get used in so many different places. Um, I'm going to do 4G for Australia. Then I might just do band 71 4G for the US as well. And then if there's any interest from Europe, I'll do an example or two for similar antennas for European bands as well. Um, and then going into more detailed conversations and getting additional feedback, say, can you do something for me or here? That's something we're going to offer in the membership portal. So if you like this kind of concept and you want to learn more or you want to continue on learning about antennas in general, exploring together, I'm not going to say I'm an expert. I'm, a, I'm, I'm just happy to take the lead in, in exploring these things. On the membership portal, which we will list um, below, if you subscribe, there will be monthly conversations and we will actually create antennas for the members. Um, that's really what I have to say about that. Now, again, the same slide as what I used in the previous one. Um, this is what I would use for the students. And if one of the students or any of the students ever watch this video, then they will remember and, and see this again. If you talk to general public, which I assume many of the um, viewers here would be, you can throw them with radiation patterns and numbers and it may not always be useful information. I really love the plots that you can generate with CST and even here on the student version of CST you can generate these plots to, to explain what's happening. So you have an antenna, a bit like a point source, just like throwing a rock in a pond of water, just circles out. That's what the antenna does. So there's my antenna, um, there's the Omni, you can see that, yes. It just rings out. That's what it continuously does, the 915 megahertz um, just comes out. When we make it a directional antenna, you turn that into a directional antenna. So everything just keeps flowing in one direction and as little as possible go to the back and to the sides. Everything goes forward and stronger. But that's of course you need to do scaling on the images to make that and that's not dumb. That, I mean that's, that's to show the intensity is another thing that you have to manage when you do these presentations. But the principle I want to show is to circle out or everything goes to one direction. Um, as I did mention, you have the, the 3D plots that you could show for an Omni, which has a donut shape. So around this antenna, it just works really well towards the horizon and but weaker to the upper and downer. Uh, upper and downer. <laughs> That's not a word, is it? No. Um, and when you, make, when you make it into a, a Yagi, which, uh, well, there we go. This is the antenna that we're going to talk about. So just already assume there's the Yagi antenna. So everything goes forward. So the radiation pattern is strong in this direction and very weak in this direction. Depending how you design it, you would have side lobes coming in different directions and you try to manage that so that at the frequency that you're specifically looking at, it is the minimum and everything goes where you want. But there is also the, the aspect of beam width, which if you look at how wide it goes, you can say I want maximum forward or you could say I want this thing to be 70 degree beam width. So if you go in this direction, 70 degree, like 35 this way, 35 that way, it still has a good signal, but narrow or a bit wider. That's the kind of thing that you can manage. Um, and also if there's noise, you could say, well, I, I don't want too much gain extra, but I really want a strong null in this direction. So let's say to the camera, I do not want to see the camera. So you can introduce a strong null so that you don't pick up what comes from that direction, but you still have quite a broad beam in all other directions. Those are the kind of things you can manipulate. And that's where Yagi and just working with reflectors and directors is super, super powerful and of course heaps of fun. Um, and then there's the 2D radiation patterns just 
what I wanted to show in this plot. You turn this from an omni to directional, looking from the top, or if you look from the side, basically it's, this goes everywhere, and then suddenly everything goes in one direction. I guess there's, there's answers to what I'm about to do, and I want to just show what you do. So the answers, first of all, do I know the internal detail? Can I repeat the design, or better still, can I control the outcome? Yes, I can, if I do my own design, and that's what we want to offer. Um, how to fix the antenna to stock the apple? I use a rubber band, so this is the spoiler alert. This is the idea that I had, and it kind of works really well. So I had the slots that I get made, and I'll show the procedure just now. Um, the slots line up with the antenna, so you basically put the rubber band around the antenna, force it, one slot goes in here, it slips in there, all right, slides over, and like that. It's fixed. There's my oh, it's on the back, so that looks silly. Sorry. There's my dial pole on the back and the antenna on the front. So let's just redo this. Um, it looks better when you do it the other way around. Um, it's just visual. This does not have an effect on the antenna, but <laughs> <it's like> it. <laughs> there we go. There's the antenna. That's my reflector that I mentioned when I did the demo outside. The antenna itself, my first director and second and third. Now you can do multiple other ones as well, but that's the antenna. That's the concept that I'm going to just quickly run through how we will build that. Um, now let's see, what do I have? Printer tolerances. The fix or the, prob the solution to overcoming the printer tolerances, and this was printed at a proper professional place, yet I still had a few millimeters up and down. It wasn't quite what I wanted. The scaling is different. It's, I put the actual numbers on there. So I tell you in text, this is a 155 millimeter, and I say the spacing is 75 millimeter, which it happens to be. Yes, it does. And then the next one, I tell you the, the length, and then the third and the fourth, I tell you the length, and I also print the actual length. So do check. Don't just go by the actual printed text there. Um, go by what is written there and make sure that it actually is correct. Um, the template is on our website. So do visit our website, rfshop.com.au. The link is down at the bottom below. And then actually um, just uh, copy it and, and try what, what I've done. So just to say what I've done, what's the procedure to follow? It's really just a craft project here. Um, the first thing is, as I said, you print out the piece of paper and then you cut it along the um, sides of the paper itself. Just, um, I did do it wrong once I first put the whole piece of paper on a carton and then it was all quite messy. So first step is cut it out along the lines. Once you cut it out along the lines, glue it onto a harder piece of um, cardboard or something. So some non-conductive structure, of course. I would just say use cardboard, quite simple. Stick it on there and then I use a standing knife to just cut along the lines to basically get a firm version of the same antenna. So this is the one I used in my previous video, as you can see. I just have this handle at the back. The reason for the handle was I want to show you as I put it against and behind. So rather than having my hand interfering with the antenna, I thought I'll just glue a handle and then put that on there. So now I have it on the um, piece of cotton and it's cut to size. The next step is to just take pieces of wire or some metal strings that you have, cut it on the length that is written on there, and then find a way. I use some um, sellotape or sticky tape, they call it here, um, and just put it into the positions exactly as marked on the, um, the template. Now the template has the actual outline, so just put it in there. The idea is that it's in the middle. I worked on five millimeter tolerances, so everything is multiples of five, so that is kind of, you should get close to that, but um, the, I found it quite hard on the stuff. I used to have a perfectly straight line. Try to be as straight as possible. Absolutely need to because that, that, that defines the distances. But if there's a little bit of wobble, this is not a, a deliverable product. This is a tutorial and a proof of concept and actually gets you experimental results. So that's what I've done there. Um, and then the last step, once that's glued on there, is get a rubber band, as I've done here and just make this little loop, as I show there. So there's the loop, um, goes through the springs, and then there's attached like that. Now the antenna does work, and I've showed that in the previous video, and I'll just show the, um, the results there from having a setup that is quite messy and a lot of reflections from everywhere into what is now a nice directional outcome. Um, I know that the previous video may not have been the perfect setup, but I do want to keep it real, and I also just want to show what what the, the idea is. Um, 
I'm going to do it on 2.4 as well, not, not the um, demonstration again, because I know it works. We do the CST simulations. And if there's any questions, any suggestions, um, do let me know. And, and um, if you want to become part of a membership of RF Shop and, and we do more of these kind of um, experiments and, and demonstrations, um, let us know and we'll um, definitely jump on it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video and the next awesome demonstration. I hope. <laughs> Cheers. Bye-bye.